Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today we're going to tackle one of the Ratkin Nightmares from Mantic Games, and they have very kindly sent me along this one, along with a couple of others in the Ratkin Warband set, to have a play around with. So I had a lot of fun sticking it together, and now painting him has turned into a bit of an experiment, because there are one or two things here where I think you can skip over some of the detail without losing the overall look. Now this is going to be pretty easy to do. I'm going to stick to Citadel products for this one, and I've thoroughly enjoyed it. <laughs> Giant rat ogre things, they're always cool, and there's just a look to them which is really brilliant. Very simple. So without any further blathering, let's get started. Now, after assembling the Nightmare, the very first thing I've done is to hit him with a primer of Leather Brown from the Army Painter. Now, Citadel, bring back Mournfang Brown Primer. It was the best stuff going. I mention this because very little of the miniature is actually going to be brown by the time we're finished, but it makes such a useful primer for everything we're going to put over the top. Now, because I want that little bit of warmth, I'm actually going to go to some Mournfang Brown here from the pot. Uh, just get it on a big old brush and start jamming it liberally over the entire miniature. Um, like I said, we're going to see very little of this by the time we're finished, but it's just going to save me some time for some of these slightly lighter colors later. And it's got a little bit of warmth, which will help with some of the skin tones too. Now that's going to dry to a nice middling sort of orange brown, and works really well for most things I find. Um, as I was thinking about it, I think I'm going to stick with this for some of the fur colors. We're going to move on though, and I have here some Mechanica Standard Grey, and I'm going to paint in his trousers. I've got one of the medium base brushes for this, and I'm not going to be terribly careful when I come near areas like the uh, armor plates or the metalwork that's sort of riveted into his legs. You'll see this covers very well, and I've actually found the Mantic site where they have their painted examples really useful for getting a look at what bits are what on these guys, because I did find them a little daunting at first, uh, but it turns out, yeah, there's not that much to them really. It won't take terribly long to do that. Uh, Mechanica Standard Grey will cover very well. Uh, the only thing you need to be conscious of is whether or not you want to be a little bit spicy and get in between those uh, leather straps on his legs. You don't have to, I would say, but it takes so little time to do. Yeah, it's a, it would be a waste not to. So we're going to move on to painting some of the skin. And these guys, I've seen them ordinarily have big fleshy hands. And I'll do his ears with this as well. This is Bugman's Glow. And you can see I'm still using my medium layer brush. Sorry, medium, what is it, base brush. I can never remember the name of all the Citadel brushes. Uh, but just cover over with this. Now on areas like his hands, you're going to want to spend a little bit of time to get in between his fingers and make sure that you've got all of that. Nails and stuff we're going to paint later. And don't forget what I did, that he has a tail. I had to come back and paint that a second time. But what we'll move on to now is the armor. And for this I'm going to use Stegadon Scale Green, which is one of my favorite blues in the Citadel range. <laughs> um, I don't use it very often, but every time I do, I am super glad that I have it. So I'm using this almost straight from the pot. I've got some of it out of my palette, and I had just a tiny bit of water in the end of my brush. Uh, so you'll see it does cover really well. Um, even these bits which are going to be like cables and such later on, doesn't hurt to make them blue now. Now in some large flat areas, you're going to need to come back and give that a second coat, but it does cover pretty well. If you end up with any little brown bits hiding in the recesses, don't worry too much. It's just going to look like grime and what have you that's collected in there. We're going to move on now. I have one of my little makeup brushes here. You could also use a small dry brush, and we're going to dry brush the armor now, before we go to the shading step. Now for this, I'm going to put him down for a second, and we're going to use Skink Blue. So I've got a little bit of kitchen towel here, and I'm going to need a little bit more force <laughs> to get some of this out of the pot. Just work some of it into your bristles, and then we're going to scrub most of it, there we go, into the paper. And then we're going to start lightly flicking against any big areas of detail to catch those edges. So rivets, the edges of plates is a really good place to do this. Don't worry if you do go a little overboard here either. Uh, because we're going to sheet it, that's going to bring it down quite a bit. 
So you probably do want to be a little bit more generous than you might think. Now, like I said, you probably want to go a little overboard compared to what you might think. So that's looking pretty cool. It's nice and quick, and we're going to do a little bit more to it later as well. We're going to move on now to the metallic stuff. And for this, you could stick to your uh, dry brush, but I'm going to use one of my beaten up old flat tip brushes. Uh, you want something a little rough whoops, that you can uh, knock around a bit, that you're not worried about keeping in perfect condition. So with some lead belcher, I'm just going to stipple on the metallic straight onto most of these areas. And then I'm going to slow down when I reach near to something that I want to stay you know, the color I've already painted it. So for the weapons, we're just going to jab on some lead belcher really quickly. And then for areas where we want a little more control, we can swap on down to a medium layer brush or similar. Now I've also used that silver to add just a little bit of interest to the front of the miniature. Uh, I think there's plenty going on back here. We're not going to need to be too worried about it. But I did want to break up some of the shape of the front just to look a little more interesting. So rather than sticking to a normal sort of leathery color for the straps and stuff, I've got here Steel Legion Drab. And the easy way to do this is rather than trying to paint a straight line along these uh, leather straps, is just going to be to align your brush sideways and just flick along like that, nice and quick. Anywhere that you do need to come back and do you know, fix up any gaps or what have you, you'll find that much easier than trying to paint a straight line the whole time. So there are a fair few straps on this big boy, and that same technique will work pretty much everywhere. Just mind when you come near his armor that you have already done. Anything else we can touch up later. Now that will take a couple of passes because he has got quite a lot of these straps either holding on his weapons or around his legs too. So take your time and it, it honestly won't take very long to do that. But just to make stuff difficult, what I'm going to do, I have here Avalanche Sunset because the more I was looking at him, I started thinking, no, come on, we can do a little more. So I'm going to paint in, oops, oh, that's a good start. I'm going to paint in just a couple of the cables um, on the model here. So let's angle him this way. It'll be a little easier to get into the, oh, goodness me, I can't get past his base. There we go. So a couple of coats of Avalanche Sunset just to add a bit of visual interest to the miniature. Don't worry too much if you hit the metallics because, you know, we can do a uh, tidy up stage last, but try and avoid hitting the armor. If you do need to go back and fix up any mistakes, a little bit of Stegodon Scale Green just over the yellow, it'll be fine. Don't worry too much if you do end up covering some of your dry brushing. I'm going to move on to Cadian Flesh Tone, and we're actually going to do sort of a pre-highlight on some of the areas of his skin. So just concentrating towards the high points. So we do want to leave that uh, Buckman's Globe in the recesses. The same as we did paint his straps, you can quite roughly just splatter some of this on. Now I'm going to leave his tail the color that it is, uh, because I want a little bit of variation between his hands, his feet, and his tail. So don't worry if this is a little rough as we first put it on, because once we shade it, this is all going to come together and look pretty cool. Now his hand there is the best example. You'll see I haven't been terribly careful. But around his feet and such as well, you don't need to worry too much about this being perfect. We are going to highlight his nails though, because he's got quite big claws. And for this, I'm going to use Morgast Bone. You could go straight to something like, uh, what's the other one? Ushabti Bone, or even Screaming Skull if you wanted really bright nails. But I'm going to take the time, just a quick splash with some Morgast Bone. Now we can move on and start doing some of the tidy up. So what I'm going to do is take just a little bit of my lead belcher again, and you'll see I'm painting in just some of the buckles and straps here. And a little bit of metallic will help break these up, make them a bit more interesting. At the same time, I'm going to fix up any of the yellow or similar that I need to do. You'll notice we haven't painted in his eyes yet. We are going to do that later, so don't worry too much. And I'm also going to go back to a little bit of, uh, what is it called, Mornfang Brown. Uh, just to finish off 
and tidy up his fur anywhere that I have splashed over with that. Once you've finished all of your last minute cleanup, it's time for my favorite stage, which is to shade him. Hooray! <laughs> you guys know me by now. I've got my Agrax Earthshade, a nice big brush, and let's spin him around. This is a pretty good place to start. Let's just start jamming this all over the miniature. Really work it into the recesses. Uh, there are quite a bit of, quite a few rather, sneaky little areas where you might miss. But take your time. Really jam it on there. You can be quite generous with this. You don't need to worry about overdoing it really. And once you've got a layer of shade over everything, we're going to let them dry for about half an hour. And there we are, the magical Agrax Earthshade to the rescue. In particular, I think you'll see that the sort of pre-highlight we did on the hands uh, and feet comes out really well once you've shaded it. And for comparison, there is this tail without that shade. So I'm going to leave that as it is. I don't think we really need to fuss very much with that. But if we want to take this a little bit further, let's just pick a couple of highlight colors. So our first highlight, I'm going to turn to Temple Guard Blue. I'm going to use this to sharpen up the blue in just a few places. Now, tone-wise, this is quite close to Skink Blue, like we dry brushed, but you'll find that this has a slightly lighter finish to it. So you'll get that when it goes on. But remember, as always, your paints will darken just a little as they dry. So I'm going to use the edge of my brush here to get a nice sharp line on his little snoot. And then I'm going to pick, yeah, just a few areas like along the tops of these sections here to give them a slightly harder edge. Now, I did end up going a little further with that than I expected, uh, but honestly, I was having fun. And I don't think that any time spent painting where you're having fun is time wasted. So you can skip as much of that as you like, but I quite enjoyed it. So do what you like there. <laughs> I'm going to move on now to Kislev Flesh, and I'm going to pick just a few parts of the backs of his hands and just pick those out to make them a little bit sharper. Now you could also do this to his feet, but why? Now when it comes to the question of how dark you want his fur to be, it's really up to you. You could leave it like this, uh, because generally I tend to find people like big monsters to look quite dark and gribbly, but I've got here Scrag Brown. What I'm going to do is pick out just a couple of these big musculature areas, areas of musculature, goodness me, and just a little bit of scrag brown to make those stand out a bit more. Now we'll look a little more interesting from the back. Let's flip them around and we're going to move on to his eyes. Now for this, I've got some white scar, and what I'm going to recommend is instead of trying to paint the whole thing from one direction, I'm going to start by just dabbing in a little bit of white and I'm going to avoid the recess where that shading is settled. But then rather than come down, I'm going to flick them around. And this will give me much more area to work with when it comes to painting. As always, whispering while I'm uh, concentrating. <laughs> You'll probably find you do need to do two coats of this. So take your time. Let that first coat dry while it's still a little patchy. And then we'll come back and give it a second. So once that white has settled and dried properly, pick yourself a contrast color. Now, ironically, I'm choosing Iandan Yellow because as well as the brand name Contrast, it is going to contrast with the blue armor. So I've got just a little of this on my brush and let's go ahead and just whop that in there straight away. Done. Now, the last thing I'm going to do will be to get a little bit of Necron Compound on my wee dry brush again. And I'm just going to lightly flick along the edges of some of the weapons. Now from here, you could also highlight his trousers, maybe a little Dawnstone. Uh, there's all sorts that you could do. But past a point, I ask you, why? Stop making work for yourselves. He's a finished miniature. <laughs> what I'm going to do is once this is finished, I am going to go ahead, pop a base on him. And we're going to look at what he looks like once he's all finished and varnished. And there at last, our nightmare is complete. Now, I actually really enjoyed painting this guy. And I think painting bigger miniatures like this bears some similarity to when you're painting units. 
you're just picking one or two things that you really want to look cool, and the rest don't worry about them. Like I mentioned, his trousers and stuff like that, we really don't need to spend a lot of time on because they're not going to be the focal point of the miniature. That blue armor and that face, that's really all you need to sell this look, and I really like how it turned out. So thank you again to Mantic for sending these guys along, I've really enjoyed painting them. They're just, they're just neat miniatures, and I think this color scheme would work on, well, just about any large armored rat that you might encounter, you know, wherever it is that you purchase your large armored rats from, who knows? So as well as Mantic, thank you very much to Exit23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of the patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my producers, Alan Nuttall, Kyrie Crawford, Jimmy, Trainboy, and Fred. Your support is invaluable. Any questions or anything, feel free, drop them in the old comments box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, one and all, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.